Hey, how's it going, guys? This is Joshua Pinga, host of the Blind Eye Podcast. Tonight, it's going to be episode, what is it? 15. 15. There we go. I always forget. Sorry, guys. Oh, you didn't get the cricket. No. <laughs> <laughs> it will tell you. Okay. He was just chiming in on what episode number it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, tonight, guys, we're going to be talking about, as we stated previously in the last episode, immersion or realism in games. Okay? Now, I know, Josh, you've been looking forward to this episode for you know quite a while. Yeah. You have... That's because, like, the one we did about VR was archived. Right. It was like, I'm telling you, we got to look back on those things. That's right. some good material that we did, but uh-huh. since we never use it because it's shit quality. <laughs> and then for anybody who's listening, VR means virtual reality. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, we've seen that in, like, dozens and dozens of science fiction movies uh, where, like, we're taken from the real world and we're put into a, a virtual world close to real, but in the form of... I don't know, whatever we want, really, right? Whatever our imagination kind of relies on. Or an already existing, uh, what is it? What's the word I'm looking for? Template? I don't know. <laughs> template? Reality. Not, not sort of template. Server. Thank you. There you go, yeah. So, joining us tonight, talking about realism in games, is myself, Josh. Abby Alejo. Joshua Carlin. And on the fact check on the computers is... Matt Kamor. How's everyone? Awesome. We're doing fine. Thanks. That, that answer is going <laughs> to take a while to get back. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, if you guys are listening to this and you guys like what you hear or you don't like what you hear, please let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear all your comments. We would love to hear some of your feedback. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Please let us know that you guys are listening to us. Okay? Let us help us help you be entertained. Okay? <laughs> so... You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. The okay. Really that was a burp. <laughs> I just don't like burping out loud. It's kind of nasty. No, oh, that's it, bro. Was. Let it out. Come on. <laughs> no. We're mature. I, I'm not Anthony. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. was that one? How would you grade that one? I'm like, two. <laughs> <laughs> There's one point where he did that, and I said, if you can't contain your burp, you're getting out of my house right now. Oh, <laughs> man. And he actually, he like, but. Like that. I'm like, that was so much better. Thank you. Applause. Applause. Can I still ask you to rate that one, though? I don't know. <laughs> well, we're not bagging on Anthony tonight. We'll save it for another episode. Can yeah. we edit that out? He listens to these, right? Yeah. I think so. I would hope so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so <You're> not. <laughs> I'm not. What is the definition of immersion? What would you give me, like, your personal definition of what immersion is? Connection and delving into the game's reality. Uh-huh. <laughs> How would you define I'm tempted it? to like you, have you, Do you ever get those definitions Like Google Where it's like Oh Google Give me the definition of immersion That's Immersion cheating. is being immersed Into the game <laughs> You can't use the word I know But I've seen that so many times Where the word is in the definition But it's like Just in a different form You ever like get, You ever <laughs> find, run into that problem With I the Websters find, No yes. real, real quick. See this word See this word <laughs> Infinite loop Yeah it's like that That thing where you Try to look up a word On Google And you have to look up the second word that it freaking uses and yeah, it's just yeah, this yeah. constant chain <laughs> until finally you get to something as simple as it it's like, <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> Webster we believed in you you had one job you see that's Define. what they do when they don't know what the definition is they just uh-huh. keep you going around in circles until you give up and you don't actually want to know what the definition is anymore most of most now that you speak Maddie Maddie is joining us tonight as well <laughs> <laughs> I know you're doing homework, but... I will input small things in the background when I actually have the... Input. Shit skin. Shit skin, that's what go. I'm looking for. I would say tidbits, I would... but okay. <laughs> no, it's not that I don't have the shits to give, it's that I'm kind of an idiot when it comes to this topic, so... Okay. Well, when it comes to most video games, I more so just tag along for the background stuff. Mm, okay. I for would, the laugh track. I would say that most words definitions come from, like, root words. Yeah. Like, yeah. from different nationalities entirely. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, that word's American. <laughs> okay. We've off topic. Yeah, we've gotten off topic. Yeah. Let's get back. Let's get back on board, guys. Come on. What is the Google? Uh, yeah. What is the Google definition oh, of right. immersion? Oh, if that right. uses the word immerse in any way or form, Abby will. Abby's called it. <laughs> Abby will have called it. The, the, the world will know. Definition. Okay, the action of immersing someone or. Something. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> <laughs> Google, yeah. not you too. Not only does it say someone or something, it also says in a liquid. 
Oh, oh, what? oh I see. Okay. Can like you... immersing, like immersing a bomb. Putting into something water. into yeah. something. The, sec- it has to the be. second one, which okay. is what I believe is what we are looking for, is deep mental involvement. Okay. I, there you go. I can go with I that. I can dig one. it. Now, here's one thing that I've been, I've been wondering. It's not, it does not apply. Oh, okay. The method of teaching a foreign language by the exclusive use of that language. You don't use any other language school. except for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like that's what they do in a lot of other like um, mm-hmm. countries and like to teach English, they put you into an English school and yeah. you have to learn yeah. English. And as you can't you use any other language. You can't no. use any other language. I yeah. took Spanish classes back at CV, and uh, one of my teachers like would only respond to us or teach us in Spanish. Mm-hmm. But this is like one of the more advanced classes, so. Yeah, they start. They started doing that more and more mm-hmm. actually in the CV language classes. Yeah, finally, yes, which makes good. sense. Yeah, start challenging these stupid kids. But then they're not helping the kids when they need the help with it. They're uh-huh. doing everything in that language, even if they ask a question, the response is in that <laughs> language, and they're not understanding what the response is. Right. There we go. It has to be like you know a balance to it. Yeah. Okay, but anyways, Let's make a U-turn. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> we went too far. We got to go block time. back. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk about the evolution of immersion. You know well, how far how how far a degree I would, have realism got into games? I would games. have to say the most basic uh, method of immersion I've seen mm-hmm. is controllers. Controllers. The way they have the controllers made. Because mm-hmm. if you were a pong, it is literally a brick with a wheel on it, yeah. and you have to just go <laughs> like that and smack the wheel, and the thing goes all over the place. Mm-hmm. But then they slowly started conforming it to the shape of the player's hand, mm-hmm. so you feel more like. I have like more control over constructive it. Constructive with yeah. it. Like, you have more control, more grab at it. But uh, now it's getting to the point where the controllers are involving movement. And you can actually in, like incorporate movement into the controllers. A good example would be, like, I know the PlayStation 4 has a touchpad on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, we don't have to just push a button or move a joystick. We can actually move the analog sticks that we were born with, you know? Well, yeah. your fingers. You there you go. Yeah, for, like, yeah, you can't move, use it for actual character movement in the game. It's mostly for, like, UI. Mm-hmm. Well, what about the um, Kinect for the Xbox or the Wiimote controller? Yeah, that's going that. into, like, a controller list. That was something what that I wanted to... But wouldn't that be more so more of immersion oh, yeah, just exactly. the button mashing and the yeah. toggle stick. Which is what's interesting. That's, that's, that, that is a good point. That's probably the farthest you can go with just controlling as immerse, mm-hmm. immersion. Mm-hmm. Is no control at all. It's just you. Which is why it's interesting. You go from like a really, you know, basic controller. What do you call it? A brick with a wheel on it? Yeah, yeah. Going to like more intricate controllers that are designed ergonomically for our hands and then going to no controllers. But yeah, that's like the most immersive we can get. I'm We're with touching that now. <laughs> yeah. With the Kinect and the, I think the PlayStation camera does that yeah. now, right? Um, and, for like yeah. an exoskeleton. No, nope. like very like gloves with Keep little dreaming. sensors on it. No, Nintendo uh, did that. Yeah, like, long ago. To... The power glove. Remember power that? Yeah. Yes. I'm pretty sure I've seen something like that before. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> um, what about? Uh, oh, what is it? Uh, we'll get to that later. Sorry. <laughs> We're skipping ahead. Yeah. Um, yes. I want to say, like, on top of the controller, like, I think just the game itself, as simple as like the perspective. Mm-hmm. Like, we start from two D side scrolling games, and then we've slowly turned into like third three dimensional. Well, sort of that thing. plus like, uh, what is it? Third person. Like, you know, back in the day, I went from playing two D side scrolling Mario games to Crash Bandicoot, where you're looking over his shoulder and you're actually like seeing everything as he is. <laughs> 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 yeah, and then oh, yeah, like. Those games. Right? Every now and again I smell something and it reminds me of a game. I don't know why. Oh, I get that too. Like, there's like one thing I... A couple times I've smelled something Shut and it reminds me of like Sonic for some reason. Watch. Like, that's going to be a thing. Smelling in the game. Oh no, god, I don't yes. want that. <laughs> Can you imagine like all the zombie games? Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> but yeah, so we go from, you know, 2D to third person over the shoulder. And now we're And then first person. first person. Yeah, yeah. so or I think even that. Hands. Exactly. Except, you know, there's always those pictures you see online where somebody tries to draw what you see in a first person game yeah. to how it would actually look in person. It makes no sense anatomically. Yeah. <laughs> because your hands are way like, here uh, then. Uh, yeah, it's like, yeah. why? Why? 
Eh. And like, I still want to see a game one day where you can still see, like, you know, because I mean, I can your still, body. yeah, like, you can look down and see your body. Or even just looking forward, I can still see like the rest of my body in my peripheral. Yeah, where it actually <laughs> gives you that type of peripheral vision. Not yeah. Just okay, we're gonna see your hand because you're raising your hand. It's like my arm is this far out. <laughs> Literally, like the first thing I see trailers for your games going so realistic, so lifelike, like. Five out of five stars. Then first thing I do when I pick up that game is look down. <laughs> I look see. down. Yeah. Do I have feet? Do they move? Do they make noise? Do I have a shadow? It's it's those little things, mm-hmm. those very little tiny things. Keep in mind though, when they made those advertisements, they were making it towards the technology that they had at hand. Yeah. You know, we're, we they weren't there back in 1996. I'm not talking about 1996. He's talking about like last month. Like last month, they saw games month. where you look down, you don't have any feet. And then they do little. I love games where they like they put one picture up of them staring down, no having feet, and then they do a sketch drawing of literally this dude like floating outward like that, <laughs> yeah. as feet are behind them. Well, what is it? That's um, that's sort of like indirect immersion because I was actually going to get into okay. uh, the difference of different types of immersion. There's the direct immer- immersion or the physical uh, like, realism in games, like in reality. In re- well, no, not necessarily in reality, but like when I say physical, you are actually using your own body to manipulate aspects and factors in the video game. Okay. That's how I would fa- define like physical and direct immersion. That's what I was going to ask. What, what would be the different types of immersion? Because you can be immersed in different ways within the game. Indirect immersion is like how real is the game? Uh, what is it compared to like real life? Like so, what? like if you have feet in a shadow. If you have feet in the game, you're going to have feet in the game. You have shadow. Yes. How well? was that shadow rendered, you know, amongst, you know, the entire mapping of the uh, of the environment, you know? Mm-hmm. How real can your weapons get? You know, I, I, I'll be honest, one thing that I did hate, and it was like a mild kind of thing that really didn't capture a lot of people's attention, is if you have like a, in, in an FPS, you have the light machine gun, it's got the little ch- the gun belt with the little th- thing underneath. Mm-hmm. I don't know the terms for it. But like when you're out of ammo, you still see bullets in the chain <laughs> that you, th- you, you have to get rid of. Like, wait, the- I still have bullets. I see them. <laughs> yeah, you still see them in the clip. It doesn't actually show you emptying. And I yeah. hear Destiny fix that, right? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I've been playing Destiny lately. I got burnt out. I'm waiting for the expansion. That's oh, gee. Uh, already? <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, I got to 26. Dustin Once you start play. playing, Josh, you will know what I'm talking about. I hear <laughs> it's repetitive. I hear it's... It is. I love the game, don't get me wrong, but I have okay. to wait for the expansion to come how, out. Anyways. <laughs> how, how do you find yourself immersed into FPS games? You, I would find myself immersed by uh, what the character can bring out, who you're playing as. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, And we'll touch this later on, but one of the modifications in Skyrim, you know, the pale, the, <laughs> the mecha of mods... Yeah. Um, where uh, you're, there's a mod where you're allowed to put a voice in your character. You know, they, they say stuff, you know, uh, automatically. I had that one for a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was pretty, it actually made me a little more connected to the character. Mm-hmm. Like, someone's talking to me and I want to, like, can you say something? I want to hear your voice. What do you sound like? Yeah. And then, like, there's a mod where it has a preset oh list of voices and, and lines that your character can say in response See why to why I told you you needed to start downloading this stuff yeah. on the PC? <laughs> I, I, that is, that is really cool. He didn't know mods until I, I started dating him. A guy who's I, immersed in no, video no, no, games. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Because <laughs> I never did PC. I always had shit computers. The games I would play is, like, freaking... The you have no excuse pinball. now. You have, yeah, no, I have excuse no excuse now. now. I have I would play pinball, solitaire, uh-huh. and all the other default games on the computers. I'd be yeah. like, oh, this My, is awesome. Minesweeper. And then I started playing Minecraft. My- and then I would play Minecraft and tell him about these mods I had on Minecraft. And he's like, how do you do that? I lost my shit on Minecraft. But right where I started laughing <laughs> is, one, because, yeah, that mod's really, really cool. But yeah. two, I saw, uh, what was it, how it should have ended mm. for Portal and Half-Life, mm-hmm. but they combine the two, and because <laughs> Gordon Freeman doesn't talk, and Shay doesn't talk, mm-hmm. they meet each other, and they're doing like this weird kind of modern sign language kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was trapped in this thing, this crazy bitch was trying to experiment, I mean, <laughs> you too? <laughs> He's like, I was up there, and this shit blew up, and it's like they're having this deep conversation, all you're getting is very dead silence and ambience. And subtitles. <laughs> I don't like. This is funny. 
So to me, what is what makes an FPS uh, game more immersive to me or more realistic is how lifelike your character is. Mm. You know, what sort what sort of aspect they can bring. Lifelike, as in the graphics, or graphics included, but like. I don't want to play as a robot that doesn't talk and, you know, that actually well, interacts. Well, you were playing Hawkeye for a while. Or Haw- no, well, Hawkin. Hawkin. Hawkin, yes. Hawkin. Well, technically you're playing a robot. Yeah, but well, it's, the it's whole a mech. game, it's a mech. the whole you're game, you're inside of it, though. So yeah. you like being able to, like, scroll through, choose your answer for the response to whatever this person's saying, actually be able to hear the person say it, mm-hmm. stuff like that. I would like to see that, you know? I think Mass Effect started doing that. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Shepard has a voice. Okay. Yeah, lovely. But yeah. they actually uh, kind of did something like that. Not with the choosing what you say thing, but mm-hmm. with Saints Row 1, throughout the whole game, at the, except for one point, throughout the game, you're mute. Mm-hmm. And then at one point, you get a phone call from like the main guy going, because you just got in a semi-crash accident on the freeway, everything's on fire, and you got thrown from the car, and he calls you going, hey man, how you doing? And he goes, how the fuck do you think I'm doing? And he goes, oh <laughs> damn, okay. It's like, you actually talk, it's serious. But then in Saints Row 2, when you wake from a coma, you talk. Like, it's, it's just and you one, talk, it's a thing. And one of the dialogue sentences that you do just just by hitting a button is that mute shit was getting old. <laughs> That's and it's like, huh. <laughs> kind of fun of themselves. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I got tired of, you know, just having my character walk by uh, an NPC and be like, okay, we gotta go do this, we gotta go do this. Can you do it? All right, let's go. <laughs> You actually want to have I want, response. I want my character to be like, yes, sir, I can totally do this. I can go this way. I can go that way. You got it, man. It's just like, you, do you like Dora to, the Explorer. So you like to create your own adventure. I would like to have... I would like to sympathize with who I'm playing as. Okay. You know, like, I, I find myself detached from the character I'm playing as because I know that he's just a lifeless model, you know, speaking technically. He's not sad. actually real. He's not real. Right, yeah. there's no voice. There's no, there, that's one aspect, yeah. So you want, sorry, go ahead, Josh. GTA, GTA did the same thing. I played GTA 3, was the very first GTA I played. Mm-hmm. Throughout the whole game, you never speak. And then in GTA 4, you actually meet the character you play as in GTA oh. 3, <laughs> and he never speaks. And throughout the whole thing, you're like, what the fuck is wrong with that guy? It's so <laughs> meta. And then you realize, wait, that was me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, fuck! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, even the way his, like, face is shaped still looks kind of like old-fashioned pixel, pixel. Kind of like, I'm like, dude, you actually look like that? <laughs> like, I, I kind of feel sorry for you now. But, no. Yeah. You were going to say something? I was just going to say, so you kind of want the dialogue aspect or feature that comes in games like The Walking Dead or Dragon Age and Skyrim. Personally, well, you played yeah. Skyrim, I played Dragon Age, and yes. they're kind of one and the same, but different in their own ways. In Dragon Age, it has that thing where you can choose dialogue, but your character never speaks it. And I'm talking about Dragon Age Origins. Um, so your character never actually speaks the dialogue out loud with the voice actor, although the other characters around you do. Yeah. So it's kind of like half and half. But um, in Skyrim... Was there a voice actor for your choices? Uh, the mod that I've downloaded, there's a set list of like what kind of voice do you want. Okay. Uh, like you can. So have. there can be. It didn't yeah. automatically come with the game. Yeah. It no. was just. It was, yeah. it was yeah. It was downloaded, and it, the cool thing was is that this modification allowed you to record your own voice oh. if you wanted to put your own voice. Kind of could get the same way. A little bit, a little bit, yeah. But like it had preset lines. It was a little too much immersion. In yeah. That way. Like that mm-hmm. reminds me. It's all cell phones and pages. <laughs> 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 hey, it's an old flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody point and laugh. <laughs> and it still works. Shut up. Oh, you know what we should do now? You know what? At least if I drop my phone, it won't break the first impact. Is it a Nokia? Drop this. No, then get the fuck times. out. <laughs> I have dropped my phone so Oh, yeah? Can times. it last one more? Yeah, probably. All right. <laughs> Let's see. It's by him. What? <laughs> Let's see. Not on cloth. No, Can we not? Off. I'm gonna cringe. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I have an idea though. Anyway. Anytime somebody drops something or their phone goes off, they have to put a dollar in a jar. That'd be Ooh. funny. Well, that could be. Exactly. Cash, though. <laughs> I like slowly being. We'll just put IOU like notes inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but see, wouldn't that be a good idea? Because then people would stop like, dropping their phone and stop having their phones go off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That is that's a really good idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, I just want to say though. Because you mentioned that you can record your own voice. And yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. Into your character. That reminds me when I was playing Jagged Age. 
I didn't know much about it going into it. Okay. Um, so I didn't know that you can get romantically involved with characters. That's and, been a thing. That's that's kind of been a but, thing amongst games, right? I know, but I hadn't played Dragon Age Origins. <laughs> okay. No. No, no. Okay. Oh, anyway. Nice. <laughs> so I modeled the character to kind of have my face. Wait, okay. So the first okay. time I had a sex oh, scene why? with one of the characters. Oh, 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 oh. So okay. No, 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 no. I want to I want to hear this. Hold on, hold on. Okay. So to Phil and Josh real quick. In Dragon Age Origins, I didn't know that you can get romantically involved with NPC characters. <laughs> And so I modeled my character to have my face. So when I had my first like sex scene <laughs> with one of the NPC characters, I was just cringing in my seat the whole time. Because <laughs> it... you had like the same face the entire time. <laughs> you were just sitting there going, like, like, oh, well, would the I, NPC is on top would, of me. Would I do that? No. I had, I <laughs> but had, I had a similar problem because I'm one of those guys that likes to get the achievements because it gives you points. And it also gives you rewards, like t-shirts and stuff like that. Yeah. One of the achievements is to sleep with a dude, <laughs> and I'm a dude, and I'm just like slowly like romancing this guy, and I'm just like cringing because I know what's going to happen. It's, it's, already, it's, it's all worth it's, it. It's already, it's it's already happened. It. It's already happened with a couple other female characters, but oh. then it finally it happens. It's with an elf, and it's with that very feminine elf, and I'm just like, hmm... Just <laughs> 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 like, like I felt uncomfortable afterwards, and it goes that little blink. Like, it was like, congratulations, you got this achievement. I'm like, oh, I feel so dirty. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you don't want it anymore. It's already on there. Yeah. <laughs> like God forbid, someone looks through your achievements, going, wait, what you do? <laughs> it was a female character. It was a female character. <laughs> Nobody will know. It's okay. Now they're gonna. Now everybody will know. Oh, sorry, I missed that part. Oh god. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. What kind of uh, what is it? Other than FPSs, there's so many more types of uh, RPG. 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 I am super RPG. Me too. What is it? Um. I know it's not an RPG. I don't think it's an RPG, but like the latest it? Metal Gear Solid title. I don't think that. Oh, I know. Um, something Rising is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. I wanted to get it. The time lapse that's in that game is real time. So if you play at night, your mm. the game okay. will take place at night. If you play during the day, the game will take place in the day. Yeah. Oh, cool. So it actually takes from the actual time clock. Yeah. And I thought that was impressive. Is it actual 24 hours too? Not like sped up time. That's cool. It is. I was like, wow, that's actual real time. That's real time. Man, see, that makes me wish. Um, isn't Tom Clancy's Division supposed to have something like that too? Yes, it is. Yeah, it is actual time cycle. It is. It It has day and night cycles. It has weather, all kinds of surface area texture packs to it, and I'm sitting there just. I'm like, oh my god! Now I'm worried <laughs> that that uh, divisions is going to be set up um, the same way as uh, what is it? Destiny. Destiny, because in what sense? In the sense that Destiny takes place on on Earth, right? Like a yes. dilapidated yeah. Earth. But you're only secluded to a certain section. Of yeah, Earth. there's you like can, the last yeah. city standing, is what it's called. See, now I can I can understand that being for division because it's mainly Manhattan, it's mainly New York. Mm-hmm. Um, but so are you, you'd be limited to New York. It, you'd be limited to New York. However, However yeah. they could do downloadable content for other cities in other know. maps. What would the transition for that be? Like you take a train to another other server? Or something copy like even that? Or simply just a different character? You mm-hmm. know, a train would actually be kind of cool. Like actually using railway transportation. Like if you're going to a different continent, you take a boat or He's still there. I swear I'd be one of those, if I was a game developer or like creator, I'd be one of those guys that would not even notify people there's an update or download or anything like that or go here to get to this place. I would literally just drop it all on them. Oh, and like, and like they boot up the game and it goes update. And I'm like, okay, you know, like cool stuff. And then I throw in a couple things like new guns, new texture packs, cool, yay. But they never know that if you go to a certain train or something like that or underground or there's a key card that you can use or a code that's on the back of the game, very, very small kind of thing, shit like that. 
and then suddenly they unlock it, and then it spreads like wildfire. That would be cool. <laughs> they kind of have to like find it on their own. That would be like a word of mouth. Like maybe like drop a hint or something until they actually look for it. The yeah, game. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Not even notifying people that Put it on there is. Board or something. By the way, there is now a new continent to explore. More like. Yeah, no, 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 no. Put a, what Penny just said was put a little hint on a bulletin board somewhere, like a note that says this train, train at here. three o'clock at this station. Like some do, like something you have to kind of decrypt or figure out. Yeah, yeah. that'd be cool. Let's well, see that. That's, that's like, like not part version. of the big trailer ads mm-hmm. for that's actually in the game that you have to and find. That being said, with you bringing up trains and like real life or real you know equivalent transportation, that'd be really cool because like. Honestly, part of the reason why I loved WoW so much back when I used to play was just riding on the boat to get to your places. <laughs> and, like, it wouldn't just cut and, like, oh, you're here. Or, like, it actually being be able boat. to fly your mount all the way to a new place and, like, see the environment. I have, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> I have problems with boats. We had discussed this in yes, the earlier. Where it dropped you off at a high-level area. Yep. <laughs> um, same thing with that. Uh, what is it? Because... I'm sure creating an entirely new environment with that amount of space would take so much memory mm-hmm. to uh, to transit transition to. You would need some sort of loading screen, right? That, yeah. that is true. Now I know Super Smash does this lobby type loading screen, where like you're kind of in a like, blank area. Yeah, it's like a blank stage, and you kind of just well in Brawl you would like beat up the punching bag. Yeah, but you're still. You, it's not just a loading screen. It's you actually actually get to do moving something and doing yeah. something. So, so uh, hypothetically speaking. A boat or a plane or a train would be a good loading screen. Like you can't leave the train car or something like that. But you you're like walk but you around, can't get up and down and walk the cars. Yeah. yeah, that'd be cool. That would be interesting. It's it's a subtle thing, but I think it would be interesting. They really do that specific thing that you just said, but like what Abby was saying, that kind of lobby thing. Uh huh. They did for Assassin's Creed. Did like they? most loading screens is just this big white kind of uh, Tartarus where you're walking around in this white room and it never ends. You can just run, sprint, walk, mm. throw weapons, draw weapons, and stuff like that. So it's like a practice room? Yeah, kind of like. It's like a, like a construct. Mm. But uh, I'm agreeing with her, because if, say you, if you're in a closed-off space, you could easily throw a texture pack. If there's any like windows or anything like that, you can throw something behind that. Like at a distance to get a kind of feel for it mm-hmm. and have it move gradually, and that could be a loading screen. That's good. But that way it's seamless. To me, that would create a little more uh, connection with the character. Like he's not just a bit, he's not just a piece of memory. Exactly. Uh, you can interact with him, you can have him do things while you're transitioning to another stage, something like that. Like it's not just a loading screen with the pictures and the hint at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I hate those. I'm sorry. I know what to do. <laughs> One game that they probably haven't really made. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure someone's made something similar to it, but you know how, like, they have lost? Lost the show? The show. Okay. All right. But take Lost. The Cloud Monster. <laughs> take Lost. I actually haven't finished it. They took it oh, off. Oh, okay. okay. They oh, took it off. Oh, years. really? Come on. <laughs> I was watching it. They took it off Hulu. I was pissed. Okay. Uh, My dad said apparently he was going to buy the whole thing. Okay. But take Lost, the show, and Cage of Eden, the manga, and put them together. Cage and then make Eden. it a video game. Cage of Eden is essentially yeah. lost. It is essentially, essentially lost. It wasn't, it, wasn't it like a time travel kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. They went to the future, and it was like a Jurassic Park. Yes. Yeah. Spoiler alert, there's dinosaurs. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> but, but I uh, couldn't get past a certain point in that Yeah, because... Because it was boring. I no, saw it. Was it. It, it, it was picks, amazing. I feel like it picks up in the at the end a little bit, it but it could have kept up, going. It picks up around the middle. It could have kept going. Did you already get introduced to Hades? No, like that secret guy. No. Yes, I got I to. Finished a, it. I got to a point in the manga where I didn't feel any connection. Connection. Not connection. I didn't feel any immediate danger. Immediate you know how dangerous. in every in every manga there's or manga however you choose to pronounce it. There is some sort of immediate threat or some sort of uh, conflict that comes across the protagonists or groups of people. Mm-hmm. I did not feel any of that within the characters. So this mm-hmm. one is less of a like a conflict or an immediate danger as much as more of a, just an obstacle. Mm-hmm. Like to survive, that's that's the obstacle. But what I'm saying is, what like in the manga, uh, Cage of Eden, they delved more onto the fact that they're putting. They're, like, gathering supplies, they're trying to ration out food and stuff like that, and then in Lost, is basically the realism where you crash on an island and mm-hmm. same thing. But if they made a game where it was, like, 
Far Cry, for example. But, like, in Far Cry, you never have to eat. You never have to eat. You never have to sleep. Yeah. And there's no real, like... Immediate danger. Immediate danger of you being malnourished. I can never say that word. Malnourished. That one. But, uh... Sorry. I'm going to take back my original, uh... Statement. Mm. I was not entertained by KGB. Okay. Okay, okay that's mm-hmm. fine. But, uh... They have that in Fallout New Vegas. If you do it on hardcore, you have to drink, you have to eat food, and you have to sleep. If you do not, you will die. Would you consider that an obstacle or no? No, no. Hold on, not an obstacle, but a factor that's tedious and unnecessary. No. You like that? I like that. You like because it's an immersion. It's it's an indirect immersion. I love it. How accurate or how much? How often did it come up though? Where you'd have to eat, you'd have to sleep. Not that often. Not that often, but you'd have to do. At least one of them? At just least once a day. Okay. At least once a day. But if okay. it was more accurate, like, too accurate, the one that kind of pisses me off is Sims. Because yeah. after you, like, you eat, you take a shower, you go to the bathroom or whatnot, you sleep, and then it's this constant cycle of, holy shit, this thing's like a baby. Yeah, yeah. you gotta watch over it. You, you have to watch over it at all times, otherwise it will die like a freaking Tamagotchi. Tamagotchi. But it... With Fallout New Vegas, it was too little. Mm-hmm. It was more of that little thing, like it pops up if you fast travel and stuff. Fast travel I like, but there are certain challenges that I like to do where it's like, play through the whole game without doing this thing. Mm-hmm. And fast travel, waiting, you can wait while sleeping, and uh, stuff like that. But it makes it very interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Less boring. Mm-hmm. Would you find that appealing in the game? If Having uh, that in the game? Yeah, yeah I'd say like so. Like in your Dragon Age with like a sleeping factor or a hunger actor factor. <laughs> um, yeah, it definitely brings more immersion. I don't think it's like unnecessary or tedious. I think it brings a good amount of immersion to it. I would like it. I feel like it would bring more of a connection for me again to the character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that, that's, really, that's really what I'm looking for. I was going to say, especially in an RPG game, you know, it's a role-playing game, so it makes sense to have it in a game like that. Mm. Didn't they also add that later on into Minecraft? Or I don't think you had... No, you had to eat... Yeah, I just remember seeing, like, a meter of little pork meat, yeah. and it would die out eventually, and you'd have to, like, finish it once in a while. Well, yeah. uh, they, at first, it was simply just your health and stuff like that, but after the adventure pack, that's when they added uh, questing and stuff like that along with hunger yeah because I think originally it just was for your health if ever you got damaged but then eventually they made it so that it would diminish and deplete over an sh- uh, amount of time mm-hmm. yeah nice. now it sounds like uh, we have more of an opinion on indirect immersion the what is it the aspect of interacting with the character in the game via controller or how real it can get inside the game um, you guys have any more thoughts on VR or direct immersion because I know before the podcast we were talking about uh, the Oculus Rift Mm -hmm. and how the same guy was developing a full body uh, controller like where you actually use your whole body like you have to walk in place you got to turn around to for your sighting for like an FPS and such so was it like there's a camera on you all the time, kind of watching your movements? The way to the, the way that it was displayed to me, and I found this out through um, there's a documentary out right now called Video Game the Movie, mm. and it's a nice little history of video games and you know evolution of video game documentary. It's cool, check it out. It's on Netflix. Um, the guy was strapped in, belt uh, strapped into a belt uh, on this device that was th- like three f- three or four, t- four feet tall. And it had a, it had a, uh, a rotor, a rotator around the belt area, so that you can make a 360 turn anywhere you were. The floor was ellipted into like a, a semicircle, and you would have to walk up this. I guess it's like super slippery because your feet. You look like you're doing the moonwalk the entire time. Yeah. So, this piece of equipment, if ever commercially distributed, would look like. Oh God, like thousands of dollars. You know what it reminds me of? What? I don't know what they're called, but they're like for babies or toddlers. Yeah, it's exactly <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah like the, the walkers. You get strapped in like the suspended seat yes. with something around it. That is exactly it. That's exactly. <laughs> so we're basically big old babies. We're gonna... <laughs> big old hairy babies. Yes, and I think you also wear the Oculus Rift, of course. Yeah. 
Um, speaking of which, though, uh, Alien Isolation, which we talked about last week, um, I heard that if you have the PlayStation camera, if you like, I think one of you mentioned it, maybe, if you make a sound or if you tilt your head. Okay, that makes more sense. If yeah. you yell, an alien will find you quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it'll just know you're there. Yeah. Or there's one, I think, where if you actually tilt your head, you can, like, you know, peek over walls and corners. That's... That would just put more tension. I wouldn't want to play that game at all. I know. Just not being able to scream. <laughs> that would have problems. You would you'd go for it? You'd do it? No, I mean, no, I, I'd do it, but I think I'd die quickly because like, <laughs> I jump scares, I, I don't predetermine, like, I'm going to scream, so keep my mouth closed or something like that, so when something jumps out at me. But when it's a jump scare, you can't control it. You kind of either yell or exactly. make a certain noise, and then now you have to deal with something that knows where you are and it's going to come after you. That's creepy. That plus, like, I have dogs, so oh. <laughs> they're going to be triggering aliens for me. <laughs> bark, bark, bark. <laughs> and then that just it turns into a domino effect. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I was thinking you guys have been talking more of like, uh, like first person games and games that are more sort of, I guess, with literally realistic aspects. But what about like side scrolling games or duty games? Such as the most common, probably being Mario. Would you fi- you find you uh, yourself immersed in those games? But what immerses you into that game? So, for example, I incredibly enjoyed Beautiful Joe when I got it as a kid. I liked it mainly for the characters and the action because I thought it was different because it kept like dicking itself for like uh, jokes and stuff. Like it kept breaking fourth wall here and there, and I was just like, "This is hilarious! This is a, a fun game for kids because no one's gonna understand half this shit." <laughs> And then the characters were funny themselves, not to mention the fight scenes were cool, but mm. what about those different types of games, since we sort of focused on one, why not touch them all? Uh, side-scrollers, I feel, are more difficult to feel immersed in and have a realistic feel, because you can see the character, like it's not just you anymore, you can actually see him physically, and he's only moving on the two-dimensional surface, yeah. which is cartoonish. I agree. The side scrollers, it tends to be you're just really getting into completing the quest as its main goal. Right. I feel like side scrollers are really uh, short lived, uh, short term entertainment uh, sources mm-hmm. um, where you are going from point A literally to point B. There's no point C, D, or you know, alternate route, F, X, anything like that. Right. Um, I know Mario kind of did something like that where they took an alternate route. You didn't have to go to point A to point B. It was on. And one of the first few levels where it was underground and you had to smash through a brick on the top of the roof just before you went back to the surface to go to get the flag. And it led to a secret room. Uh, you had to side-scroll all the way on the top. You're like at the very top of the screen. You side-scroll to the secret room with three tubes. It was like World A, World B, and World C. And you can like jump to any world that you wanted to. Yeah. So there's, there's that sort of aspect where it's not totally constricted by the coding of the developers. Um, you're allowed to take side routes and such. If there are more examples like that, I would love to find them out. Okay. Mm-hmm. I hate invisible walls. Invisible walls? That, that kills the mood for me. What do you mean invisible like, walls? Like, oh, uh, reaching the end of the game as you know it. I went to the edge of Skyrim, and there was an open gate, and people, NPCs, were walking out that direction, but I could not follow them, and I was oh, furious. Sorry. Like, this was something that got me furious for a couple minutes. It was, I, pre- it was pretty bad. It was like, I want to I wanna go with you. <laughs> can going. you take me with you? The, the gate was open. I can understand if, like, there was a roadblock or there was, like, a rock slide or the gate was closed simply. Mm-hmm. But it was open. I could see beyond the gate. And other characters are going there. And other it. characters were going there. Yeah, something just... like that with uh, Fallout New Vegas. Yeah. And I could tell it was going to be a downloadable content because when I went up to the thing, it was... It looked like someone had piled tons and tons of cars on top of each other and lit on fire. Mm-hmm. And there was spray painted of uh, like, turn back, go away, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then there would be this symbol of the old, uh, old fashioned American flag, the mm-hmm. circle. And I'm like, yeah, I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> I turn around and walk did, the other way. Did it ever come out? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was very uh, cool. Uh, like, see, that would be cool with something like that with Destiny, because I haven't yet to... Oh, what are the walls like? Have you reached the edge of the world yet? 
No, there's really no such thing. Other than that, there's just like cliffs you can fall off. Mm -hmm. But because, like, I know you haven't played Destiny yet, but Shit, instead right. of it actually being really Sorry. open world, you just kind of go from one world to another. So you're just playing in one level and you just kind of have an objective. So okay. it's not really all connected in a sense. I'm wondering how Division is going to handle that. Because mm -hmm. I know you're just restricted to New York, but like, imagine you can go to like Chicago. Piles of cars and stuff like that. Go to Los Angeles. I want to see a rendered version of Los Angeles, man. Series. That would be sweet. Yeah, but if you find your house, I was gonna oh, say. Oh my god! Like how creepy. You know what? If they sign a contract with Google, mm -hmm. you need you know the Google cars that drive around. Yeah. I fucking found my house, and I was like, Yeah, that's my house. And I could see that in a video game. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, oh ooh ooh. Uh, GTA. Remember yes. how there's like there's shit ton of buildings. You're in urban society. Didn't one of the GTA games include, like, you can go into almost every building? Like, there was a room inside? It's mostly... Uh, GTA 4 touched on that. Uh-huh. GTA 5 pushed forward on that just a tiny bit. Yeah. But they never really fully went to that. Uh, okay. But so that would be pretty... That would be pretty impressive, actually. If, like, you can go into every... At least the first floor of like, every building. They did something like that with right. Red Dead what? Redemption. Red Dead Redemption touched on that a lot. The uh, the cowboy game? Yes. There's not that many buildings. Yes, so. <laughs> but you can go into them. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, uh, okay, all right. Yes. That would drive me crazy in almost a way that I... <sighs> okay, in Pokemon, I have to enter every building, talk to every person. That, 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 that yeah. Oh. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and even in RPG games or like Dragon Age Origins, I have to go into every little hut. Every oh, it's a, to define something or it's like some sort of. I'm just like, there's gonna be something free. These people are so generous. <laughs> <laughs> there was one. Somebody posted this on Reddit. There was one NPC in the Pokemon world. We're like, what are you doing in my house? Yeah. Get out of my house, please. Or um. Sorry. <laughs> in Dragon Age Origins, I can't remember what city it was or town it was, but you go in. And you meet this guy, and you think he's one guy, and you talk to him, and you, and then if you snoop around his house, which I always do in case there's loot, if you go into one room, he's like, no, 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 don't go in there. And then you have the option to either, like, ignore him, go ahead and respect him and leave, or just straight up attack him. So I pushed for opening the door. I'm like, oh, there must be something good in here. So you open the door, and then you see a body bag inside, and you find out that he's actually an imposter. The real guy who you thought lived there is the guy dead in the body bag. Oh. So he was like, he killed the guy so he can live in his house and store goods there. So like, see, that's just one of the things. I'm like, oh, there might be something in here. <laughs> yeah. So when I did it, um, he got mad at me for opening the door and finding the body. So he attacked me and I ended up killing the guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then looting the house. I really <laughs> hope that they do something like that with Division. Like being able to go into multiple different houses. There was a one cutscene, or at least one gameplay scene, where like they're setting up uh, was their base, their op yeah. base of operation. It was like this huge office, but not an office building. It looked like a like a ju uh, like a uh, shit, like a Court. courthouse. How awesome would it be if you can explore every single room in that? You know, yeah. How, like it'd be really cool if they actually did turn that into their HQ, which means that we would have the ability to, to find do buildings and. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if there's going to be every single building you find because you know, here's the doghouse. I shall make this my face. <laughs> but uh, more so like specific points. But it, that's touching on something I talked about, about in a previous episode is when we were talking about zombie apocalypse with the vaults. Yeah. And how cool would it be in Fallout if you could go into one vault and it's in pristine condition and turn that into your base of operations? Oh yeah, I remember that one. I'm like, it pissed me off that I couldn't sweep up or clean or <laughs> clean that glass right there because it's like got crud on it or something like that. You would want it clean Yes. in a, in, a, in a game? No. Like, I would want to pay money to clean. Like, you do that with some video games where it's like the place is a shit hole. Like Saints Row 2, mm -hmm. you do that. It's this underground place and you pay money to make it better. Mm -hmm. Go. Pokemon, to a degree, has that too in the third generation, yeah. which is also going to be present in the remake coming out in November, uh -huh. where you can like get into caves or trees and make it your secret base. Really? Yeah, so you can you know use like an HM or a TM move to like clear out the area. You don't actually see it; you just do it, and then you can go in, uh -huh. and it's like empty. But then you can lay out furniture. You can do that in and the dolls. fourth generation too with the secret. Oh really? With the secret underground? Did you not? I didn't play the fourth generation. You didn't play Diamond Pro? 
Mm-mm. No, they had that. They had that uh, concept. They had an un- underground um, like maze of tunnels, and you can, yeah, you can like play catch the flag and whatever. And you can play out. What? Yeah, <laughs> you, may, you create your own secret base similar to it was in the third generation, yeah. which I didn't play, but uh, it, very, very, very similar. You can gr- uh, pick up items from different uh, like trade traders and mm-hmm. sellers, and across the map of the the underground and the map of the actual. Pokemon universe, mm-hmm. so you can like use dolls, furniture, yeah. uh, statuettes, and whatnot. So it was. I, I thought that was always cool. Mm-hmm. That part's also exactly the same for the third generation. Okay. That's kind of touching on another indirect form of uh, immersion. immersion. Thank you. Is customization? Mm-hmm. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. Is How being far? being able to customize your character to look more like you, or the voice and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That sort of touched on what I was going to say. I, when I asked Anthony, who couldn't be here for personal reasons, uh, I asked him what he liked about FPS games, and he says, one of the first things he says was being able to customize your character to whoever you want it to be so that it's more sort of, this is my baby. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Korean RPG, uh, I forgot what the title is, but the customization level on that game is a little Extreme. concerning. <laughs> But impressive nonetheless. Oh my god, like customized like your hair to the centimeter, like not just preset <laughs> hair styles, like short the hair. Game? Huh? What is the name? I don't game? know, but I saw it on a, I saw it in a post on Reddit. It was like the title was the most impressive customization level ever. Just, and of course it was an unavailable un American unavailable oh. RPG that was only based in Korea. If somebody can find that, please post, please comment and let us know. I wanna know what it is. I will fully embrace that. I don't mind fully detailed customizations because that I was gonna bring it up too. Aside from you know loving one. loving NPCs with <laughs> yourself. <laughs> oh god, please don't remind me. I have okay. nightmares about those scenes. But yeah, customization is like I think the most important to me and the most fun for me and I think some like preset cu- customizations are too yeah I want to like fully customize everything mm-hmm. there, there are a few games where you can customize you know how far your nose comes out how wide it is I would like, like to keep it realistic when they do that because yeah. I know you're allowed to stretch your nose sometimes <laughs> yeah. like a Pinocchio but okay that's cool that's for comedic <laughs> reasons but Sims 4 like I just recently we just recently got uh, Sims 4 mm-hmm. and it is very well done. The like customization. It's kind of creepy. We both made our characters, and we actually look very similar to our if, real person. If you're looking at the face, it gives this kind of highlighted area. Like I will mouse over my cheekbone right here, and it will highlight that specific area, and I can grab it, pull it, stretch it, and move it all around. And actually, I got to the point where I was like, mirror. Self-portrait. <laughs> this here. is going to be the next. You can like change system. like sculpting. You can change the girth of a specific body part. Not just increase your weight and everything oh, evens cool. out. You can like my hips are wider than my chest is because that's how it actually is, and I can edit that in the game to make it actually look more realistic to my actual person. Mm-hmm. It's actually pretty creepy. He walked in because I did it when he wasn't there. I said, "Hey, babe, look at my character," and he went. Uh, That's a little creepy. Because <laughs> he, uh, it actually looks like me. Like, it even had the same hairstyle I had right then and everything. It is very well done. But okay. overall, like, at first, when I first heard about it, Oculus, uh-huh. when I first heard about it, I was like, that stupid, like, get away, like, <laughs> get off my lawn! Or like... <laughs> Like, that's going to be annoying, having that whole thing on your head, and then I didn't realize that we already did something like that when we were kids, and we did that 3D, like, race driver kind of crowd. Oh, and, yeah. Like, they did two different things, but kind of panned it in a little bit, so you get that 3D effect, but now it could be heading something the ass. But with Oculus now, I'm looking at it, I'm looking at most of the games you can play with it, I'm just like, okay, I want one. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing that I was thinking about. There was one game that I saw on a... Um kind of a showing of the Oculus Rift. I can't remember what it was. It was kind of like the Western game thing where they had the different people. But um, you could actually see your body. Like, you would look down, you had feet that moved, you had the shadow, you had... If There was one guy that's kind of bigger. He was like the guns happy guy, and he had a big round stuff that you could kind of see <laughs> below your eye level if you were looking up. And, like, the arms were more realistic any time that they held up a gun or something. It wasn't like they were way out here. They were actually, like, in the right spot more so. It was actually kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what it was, though. It had, like, trains and stuff in it. 
It's not Team Fortress, is it? No, Team no, Fortress doesn't do that. Okay. Well, we're running out of time, guys. So, do you guys have any last minute uh, last minute remarks and such? Uh, oh, like love an Oculus Rift for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Word of caution, though, if they have a testing of one at the convention, be wary. Because <laughs> uh, Rooster Teeth was talking about how they went to a convention that had demos of it, mm-hmm. and like some percentage of people there contracted pink eye oh, from geez. sharing oh, the my Oculus God. Rift. Nice. Because yeah. they can't clean it properly, so pe- somebody who has an infected eye would put it on. Like I was expecting something like, oh, they all tried it and then they fell down and broke the merchandise or something <laughs> like that. But pink eye, curveball, did not see that coming. Well, because one person can get it and then it spreads like wildfire. That's pink how it goes. That's I'm how it goes. I'm not doing that. <laughs> so that's pretty much all we have for tonight this week we're going to be talking more about video games more about aspects of video games later on in the coming weeks one thing that I wanted to touch that we didn't get to but we will get to next week is uh, immersion with sexuality in video games <laughs> that's not going to get flagged <laughs> Post to YouTube immediately. <laughs> <laughs> like what Abby was talking about about her. I'm sorry. I know. I know. There's, there's more Dude. to it too. I know there's for more. That episode. Yes, we're gonna save it for that episode. Like it was like a slow drama. Like it's like like they fade in, fade out. And it's like <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm watching like, TV or something. Like, yeah. I'm supposed, like I'm supposed to go to bed right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know that feeling when like a sex scene comes up while you're watching a movie and your parents are there? That's yes. what I felt like watching my own sex scene with the character. Watch behind you. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up tonight, guys. Thank you guys for showing up tonight. Thank you for coming to the studio. and Thank you for participating in this awesome episode. All right, guys? This is Josh being your host. Abby Alejo. Josh McCarling. Ray Harden. And our phone in the computers is? Matt Kamor. All right, you guys. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Night. <laughs>